Welcome to Your Health Matters Talks. I am Sabrina Chikuti, a partner governor for South Central Ambulance Service, SCAS. In this feature, we will be focusing on stroke. Every five minutes, someone will have a stroke. So our first video clip will be explaining how to spot if someone is having a stroke and the importance of getting help quickly. This will be followed up by a guest speaker from a local charity showing how stroke survivors can be helped in the community. For the first video, I would like to introduce you to Dave Sherwood. Dave is Head of Clinical Excellence at SCAS. He's a paramedic, a stroke survivor, and our first expert explaining how to identify when someone is having a stroke and when to call for help. Hi, I'm Dave Sherwood, Assistant Director of Patient Care at South Central Ambulance Service. Stroke is classed as a medical emergency in the UK. To identify a stroke, the FAST mnemonic is used by health professionals and the public. The FAST mnemonic stands for Facial, Arm and Speech Test. However, in the public campaign, the T is changed to time. Facial. Look directly at the patient and ask them to smile. Be looking for asymmetry on both sides of the face such as the corner of the mouth rising equally. Also look at the eyebrows and the forehead. Arms. Ask the patient to close their eyes, hold their arms straight out in front of them at shoulder height if possible, with the palms facing down. You are looking to see if one side drops more than the other, or if the hand turns outwards. Speech. Ask the patient to say, Red lorry, yellow lorry. And listen for any slurred speech or speech impediment which is unusual for the patient. If there is any facial droop, arm drift or slurred speech, the patient is fast positive, no matter how minor or subtle the signs are. Time. It's time to dial 999. The patient will be taken to the most appropriate hospital, not always the nearest. I am personally testament to the success of the stroke pathway as in 2017 whilst at work I suffered a stroke with complete left side paralysis and I was unable to speak. My colleagues took me to the nearest hyperacute stroke unit where I had a CT scan and was thrombolised within 42 minutes of the onset of symptoms. After six months of rehabilitation I made a full recovery and return to my role in the ambulance service, working full time. Dave, what can a friend or family member do to help while they're waiting for the ambulance? Once you have dialed 999 and the ambulance is en route, reassure the patient and protect them if they are falling to one side. Gather as much information as you can, the time of onset of the symptoms being the most important key information hospital will need if it's known. A copy of a recent repeat prescription is also very helpful and pack a few essential items as the patient is likely to stay in hospital overnight. Once the ambulance arrives the crew will confirm the fast positive and will aim to move the patient into the ambulance within 10 minutes of arrival. The quicker the patient arrives at the hospital the more chance there is of reducing the long-term effects. A fast positive patient will be taken to the nearest hyperacute stroke unit where the patient will be fast-tracked to the CT scanner to identify the cause of the stroke. On leaving hospital, patients are offered continuing treatment and follow-up appointments, but additional help is available. Here is Judy King from Newbury and West Berkshire Speakability one of the organisations providing community support for stroke survivors. Hi everyone, I'm Judy King. I'm the one who swapped being a deputy head teacher of a primary school to working for West Berkshire and I did stroke family support. This was actually a result of two of my family members having a stroke. So for 12 years I visited stroke survivors in hospital and then I supported them when they got back home with their families. And I did this alongside the National Health Service. So following a stroke, 
you may have been in a stroke unit or you could have been in a rehabilitation ward and you will have had your support reviewed for when you're discharged to come back home. Depending on your needs, the people who will help you then could be a physiotherapist, an occupational therapist, um, maybe a speech and language therapist, possibly a dietitian, or even a psychologist. You will have in your area as well a specialist community stroke nurse and that person will review your progress for quite a long time. Because every stroke is different, there is no set pattern for recovery. Stroke survivors like Dave will tell you it is hard work both physically and mentally when you get back home but perseverance really is vital for your progress. You might need some help with walking, speaking, maybe other skills like reading, writing and even understanding. But your family and friends can help enormously. They will be there to encourage you alongside your therapists and sometimes with work that you are given, homework to do. In your area there will be groups that can also help to support you. Find out where they are, who they are. Ask your family to look it up. I run just such a group in West Berkshire for stroke survivors and yes you are survivors. We're a very active group. Um, we've got all ages from 40 to 80 plus and um, we very much focus on self-confidence and mutually supporting each other. When we were meeting physically, we socialised, we enjoyed interactive speakers, we had some speech therapy, we had carers groups that chatted together. Always plenty of laughter. We very much look forward to our outings again for coffee, lunch, theatre, exhibitions, going on gardens, seaside trips, indeed anywhere where we could just be together and where we could interact with each other. For the last year or so we have been meeting weekly, having Zoom meetings. We still run speech therapy. We've started a men's group, a women's group, a young members group and we've even got a book club. Our volunteers and myself have delivered flowers, art and craft work, surprise items, we send letters, we send postcards, we're all making phone calls. Myself and our trained volunteers are really willing and helpful. We inform, we advise, we give you ongoing support and we set measurable goals for you and your family. We concentrate on working with you. You as a person taking into account your past life. Now in our group we've got an ex-racing driver, jockey, actor, solicitor, even a Russian translator. We've got a chef, a teacher, a builder and an ex-rugby player who's also a singer. That's just naming a few of us. We want to make sure that you continue to have the very best present and the very best future. So always, always remember your stroke does not affect your intelligence. You will always, always be you. Even if sometimes your brain behaves or your body behaves a little bit differently. Always, always be strong. Always be positive. And always, always believe in yourself. <laughs>